So I just got back from the Apple store and I gave Apple close to $1,400 of my money for this new Mac mini. And in this video, I wanna unbox this Mac mini with you guys, share my first impressions and also talk about the pricing structure. So I got this from the Apple store nearby and the M4 base variant starts at 60,000 rupees in India, but the M4 Pro starts at 1,49,000 rupees in India. But if you have a credit card, they'll give you guys a, you know, a little discount and you can get this for 1,45,900 rupees. And if you convert that to dollars in the US, uh, the base variant is 5.99 and the M4 Pro variant is 13.99. And you're gonna get the Mac Mini in this sort of packaging even if you order it from Apple's website. But since I bought it from the store, they asked me to unbox it there just to make sure everything was fine and yeah I did I didn't want to risk stuff so this is the box of the M4 Mac mini you're gonna get the same box no matter which variant you get and this has the M4 Pro chip with 24 gigabytes of unified memory I'm really excited for that and 512 gigabytes of storage now 512 gigabytes is kind of less but I don't want to buy storage from Apple this in itself the M4 Pro is super expensive and if I wanted to upgrade this to a terabyte of SSD storage I would have to pay 20,000 rupees extra or $400 in the US and I don't want to do that I'm just going to use you know external storage and that's fine since I have Thunderbolt 5 ports I should be able to get really good speeds. And there you go. This is the second time unbo I'm unboxing this. So the M4 Pro Mac Mini, it's super small. And I'm gonna take the plastic off for the first time. I haven't taken it off yet. And the color itself is the same, but this is super light. And also now that I've been using the M1 Mac Mini, the size difference is just incredible. So yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of surprised Apple was you know, able to fit so much tech in there. But I'm also sad that we're losing the USB type A ports. I really liked the IO on the Mac mini, the old design, but there are some you know, nice things about the M4 as well. So first things first, let's just take a look at the ports. So you have your three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back. And if you get the base variant M4, you're gonna get Thunderbolt 4 ports. But with the M4 Pro, you get Thunderbolt 5. Now, it's not gonna be a huge difference. Uh, it's just gonna be for displays and stuff. I would say the base variant is fine. And this is gonna be more useful for docks and high resolution, high refresh rate displays, or if you have super fast storage. But even Thunderbolt 4 is fine. You're gonna get really good speeds. You have HDMI, you have ethernet, and you can get the upgrade to 10 gigabit ethernet. I didn't go for it. I don't use that kind of networking in my studio. And there is the power in. And towards the front, which I really like, is two USB-C ports. These are not Thunderbolt. These are just normal USB-C. Uh, there is the LED indicator and there is a headphone jack. I really like that Apple has given us IO on the front, but I miss that they don't give us a SD card reader. Like the M4 Pro chip is super capable, but they're not giving us an SD card reader. That would be super useful for video editors and photographers. Just content creators in general require a SD card slot. It would be nice if they just, you know, gave it next to the headphone jack. Now the most controversial part about the new Mac mini is actually the power button. And I'm someone who turns off my computer every day. So I turn off my Mac when I'm leaving the studio and the power button placement is kind of awkward for me. So every time I have to turn it on, I have to lift up the Mac mini and then press the button. Again, it's not a huge deal breaker, but was there no other way they could have done the power button? Was this the best place they could have done it? I don't think so, but Apple likes to do things their way. It's fine, I'm not complaining, but yeah, the power button placement of the M1 Mac mini is fine, but there was no IO on the front, which was kind of, you know, inconvenient. So every time I had to plug something in, I had to, you know, go back and put my hand behind my desk to plug something in. So I just bought a Thunderbolt dock for that reason. But yeah, it's nice to have USB-C on the front now. And now I'm gonna go over to my setup, set this up and give you guys my first impressions. Yo, so I've had the new Mac mini for a bit now and I have installed all the you know apps and programs that I needed and I did run some tests, so benchmarks and a video editing test. But before I get to the numbers, I wanted to give you guys a quick little setup tour just to you know explain why I got this Mac mini, you know, specifically compared to a gaming PC or something like that. So if you start off, 
right here. This is the new Mac mini. It takes significantly less space compared to the M1 Mac mini, which I had prior to this. I have my you know, speakers from NZXT. These are their relay speakers. Now, since there are no USB-A ports on the new Mac mini, I have to use a dock and the dock gives me a SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, headphone jack, also a bunch of USB ports on the back, a ethernet jack as well, if I want to use one. And then there is the you know, wireless charger for my watch the Focusrite Scarlett Solo 3rd generation. This is the audio interface that's powering the headphones, which are the Sennheiser HD 300 Pro. I think the logo is on this side. Yeah, so these are the HD 300 Pros. These are monitoring headphones, not for fun listening, I would say. They lack a lot of bass. Then you have the external hard drive that I'm using. This is one terabyte just for backup storage. And for peripherals, I'm using the Logitech MX Master 3S with the Creo Swarm keyboard and the Apple Magic Trackpad 2. All of this is on the Daily Objects desk mat. And these are the kind of SSDs I use. These are portable SSDs to give me, you know, storage for editing videos and stuff. So that's the setup tour. Now I want to talk to you guys about the benchmark numbers. Coming from the M1 Mac Mini, the new M4 Pro Mac Mini is a huge upgrade. Personally, I can feel the difference in speed. I started off uh, with some basic benchmarks. So Geekbench 6, and I got a single core score of 3,621, which is bonkers. And technically this is the strongest single core right now. Like even if you compare it to other CPUs from Intel or AMD, this is super powerful. So if you're doing single core heavy tasks, this is really good. And the multi-core score is also really insane compared to the M1 and M2. I'm also gonna throw up some you know, comparison numbers so you guys can get a context of the performance. I get a multi-core score of 20,000. And I also did a GPU score. And in Metal, this GPU, the M4 Pro, gets 97,000 points. And the M4, the base variant, also has a decent GPU. Both of them are a huge upgrade compared to the GPU on the M1 and M2. So if you're doing you know, video editing or 3D design, this can help. Now, down the line, there is gonna be an M4 Ultra and an M4 Max, which are gonna have more GPU cores. So you should be able to get more performance. Now, in this current state, the M4 Pro's GPU is comparable to a RTX 4050 on a desktop. Now, it's not meant for gaming, but you can play some games. I personally don't use the Mac for gaming. I do have a gaming PC. So that's that. Now coming over to Cinebench, I want to show you guys the scores right here. And my single core score is 171. My multi-core score is 1390 points and the GPU gets 7000 points right here. Now while I was doing the Cinebench benchmark, the Mac Mini heated up like it was warm to the touch and I could hear the fan. I never heard the fan on my M1 Mac Mini, but for the first time, I could actually hear the fan spinning on the M4 Pro. It is a more powerful chip. It needs that extra cooling. So if you're really pushing the M4 Mac Mini, you will be able to hear the fan. Next up, I ran a disk speed test using Blackmagic's uh, speed test tool, and I got really good numbers. And if you hop over to Tom's guide, they have a comparison between the M4 and the M4 Pro's SSD. And the numbers are actually quite different. It's not the same SSD. You can see that the M4 has a base write speed of 3000 megabytes per second, but the M4 Pro has a 5100 megabytes per second write speed. And the read speeds are also significantly different, 3400 versus 6300. So if you are looking for a fast SSD, the M4 Pro does have it, and there is a difference. A lot of people think that the SSD on the M4 and M4 Pro is the same, it's not. So if you're getting the M4 Pro, you do get the faster SSD as well. Last but not the least, I did do a you know, video editing test, so I get a five minute clip from the Canon R6, shot in 4K, 10-bit, 422, 60 FPS, and I rendered this with an adjustment layer and a random LUT just to have some colors. And the Mac mini M4 Pro was able to do this in eight minutes. And I rendered this at 240 megabytes per second. And when I compared this with my M1 Mac mini, which has eight gigabytes of RAM, it's the base variant, I got a render time of 21 minutes. 
eight minutes versus 21 minutes. That's a huge difference for me in terms of video editing. Now, if you do the same test in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna have different numbers. Especially in Final Cut Pro, this render might take four minutes because it is so optimized for the Apple Silicon, whereas Adobe Premiere isn't. Now, I have been an Adobe Premiere user for the last six or seven years, so it's kind of difficult for me to just switch over to Final Cut that quick, but there is a you know, significant performance difference. So that's that. Now, if you compare the size versus my gaming PC right here, which has a Core i7, RTX 3070 Ti, which I use for playing games, the size difference is just, it's just hilarious. And trust me that I can get the same kind of work done on the Mac mini that I can do on this PC. This has a lot of fans, makes a lot of noise, takes so much space, and all of that is possible on this machine, which is just insane.